What is up you guys, my name is Noah and this is Tech New, and yeah, it's been a little while. Uh, school is just... <laughs> this is a long awaited video, I've been really wanting to make it, and it entails my experience switching to Android. And I did promise this video in my OnePlus 5 review, which I do recommend you watch, I'll link in the description. Anyway, my goal for this video is to help those of you out there who are interested in an Android phone but aren't quite sure if they are ready to make the jump two ones. So without further ado, let's begin. Up until about 2014 to 2015, I will admit I was a hardcore Apple fanboy. And you know, part of it was just ignorance, but another part of it was that the Android market, in my opinion, wasn't matured yet. Um, before Android Lollipop, I had phones were just kind of, I don't know, just gross to me, like the Samsung Galaxy S2, uh, other of those really early Android phones, the operating system just seemed laggy and optimized and not aesthetically pleasing. And I'm not saying pre-iOS 7 versions of iOS were, you know, aesthetically pleasing. We've gotten past that skeuomorphic type design. But just Android, to me at the time, just wasn't really enticing. Up until, as I said, the release of Android Lollipop, when I started to get a little more interested, or a lot more interested in the operating system and the phones that ran it. I remember the first Android phone I was really into was the Galaxy Note 4 Edge. Uh, I looked at it and I said, wow, this phone offers so many features, customizability. I mean, that Edge display, which was unseen at the time. I began to question my unfailing faith to Apple. And <laughs> it sounds like I was indoctrinated, but I really was. I was that invested in Apple products. So when I finally narrowed my choices down to two Android phones to buy, the S8 and the OnePlus 5, was I willing to give up iOS as an operating system, as a user experience? And yes, I was ready to. Um, I got really bored of it. It just proved to be the same old, same old year after year for me ever since, pff, I don't know, 2012, 2013. I mean, what, what is radically different about iOS? Nothing, really. So the real deciding factor for me when it came down to it was whether or not I was willing to lose iMessage. And uh, that's a really tough decision for some people because um, if you own an iPhone, chances are your family might own iPhones and your friends might own iPhones. And in my case, that is the truth. So it's really convenient to have iMessage on the go. Now, probably one of the reasons why I switched to an Android phone was because I own two and a half Apple products talk a little bit more about iMessage. Once you use it, you don't want to lose it. It's a great experience. A friend of mine who was a longtime Android user ended up buying a used iPhone 6S off of eBay, not because it was an iPhone, not because he wanted iOS, but because he wanted iMessage. That was the only reason why he bought it. And he told me that straight to my face. So once again, iMessage is a huge staple of the iPhone. And uh, in this case, I was willing to go without it, at least on the go or not in an area with Wi-Fi or my other Apple devices. So if you're in that predicament, if you're in my same position, then let me tell you, it's not the worst thing. But if your only iMessage enabled device is your current iPhone, your decision is going to be much more difficult. But don't fret, I'll cover more on this later in the video. So what's great about Android? What have I benefited from? What's my experience been? Well, first things first, let's talk about just the customizability because that is absent from iOS 100%. Um, the level of customizability on an Android phone is great. Now, it's not like you can't change every little thing. I haven't rooted my phone yet, and I don't think I will, but being able to change icons and just add your own widgets and add your own clock, it's phenomenal. I love it. It gives your phone a personal touch. Secondly, the notification panel, I don't, I don't know Android terminology, I hate to say it, the ability to access quick toggles like that on that level is so intuitive you can change your wi-fi network without going to the settings app it goes on and on and on just it's very intuitive like i said and it's miles better than apple's control center in my opinion um, i also love the back and app switcher buttons i never really thought about how useful they can be and i also you know take like a unnecessary back button out of the user interface just really like that i also love the alphabetically listed app drawer and android nougat uh it's really useful to me you know i don't feel like searching my apps manually but being able to just you know kind of scroll through you know a through z find the app that you want tap on it without having to go through numerous folders and just pages so much easier 
I really like it. So what are a few downsides? Well, first of all, if you didn't already know this, Snapchat is not the best performing app on Android. Uh, it's really obvious that Snapchat developers uh, pay more attention to their iPhone users than their Android users, which is kind of a shame. But I mean, it works well enough. Um, I only get a few crashes once in a while, maybe like once a week, twice a week. Not a big deal, but it's definitely more glitchy than it is on iPhone. So another thing that I'm not a big fan of is the volume toggle. Sometimes I just want to turn my volume down all of a sudden and say I'm in a place where I need my phone to stay quiet, but it's not being quiet. Say I'm playing a video or I accidentally play some music and I'm like, oh gosh, I don't have any headphones that I can plug in. Got to turn my volume down. Can't do that because it says, oh, well, do you mean you want to turn your alarms down or your music volume down? And I, it's just, mm. lastly, file transfer is not intuitive, at least with a Mac. I don't know about Windows users, but for me, I use uh, an app called AirDroid where I can transfer files and send text messages off my Mac to my phone. But still, like I, I wish I could just more easily transfer photos without using Google Drive or any wireless options. I want to just be able to plug it in and use it. And Android file transfer is just god awful on the Mac. But yeah, just for Mac users at least, in, in my experience, file transfer is just kind of a pain. So now that I shared with you my experience switching and using Android, I want to make a few more points and re-emphasize some as well. Um, really do research the phone that you want to get. Look at each company, look at what it has to offer feature-wise, hardware-wise, and user experience-wise. Hardware, I would say, is more homogenous throughout the industry. I mean, most flagship phones are going to have, you know, Snapdragon 821, Snapdragon 835, 1080p or 1440p panels, whether they're AMOLED or IPS designs, if you really look at it in an objective way, they are all pretty similar. You know, each phone is sporting a edge to edge display almost, except, you know, the iPhone 8, which I already complained about that. Um, they all have great cameras. They all have great battery life, really. Um, it all comes down to user experience. When it comes to iPhone, you don't have to worry because the user experience is pretty much the same across all devices. Um, but when it, when it comes to Android, each company has their own take on it, like LG's, Samsung's, Google's itself, and uh, OnePlus's are all going to be different in a couple of ways. They all have their own features, they all have their own weaknesses and strong points, so be sure to look into those uh, aspects before you just arbitrarily buy a phone and then hate it because you didn't you know, do enough uh, research and enough homework to determine whether or not you would want to use it. Um, Secondly, so when you finally narrow your choices down to one or two Android phones, you need to ask yourself these two questions. Number one, am I willing to make the switch itself from iOS to Android? Am I willing to acclimate from, you know, iOS, which you may have been using all your life or for a long period of time to, you know, Android, which um, experience may vary manufacturer to manufacturer, phone to phone. If the answer is yes, then you ask yourself, is iMessage, which I assume is a huge factor in you switching or not, um, is iMessage worth or equivalent to all of the features in Android that entice me? And if the answer is no, then this the Android features are more important, so switch. But if iMessage is more important to you and the way you use your phone, you know, your lifestyle, whatever, then stick with iPhone. So that's my spiel. I hope I helped you out in some way. Um, it did take a while for me to switch to Android, and I hope I could expedite your process in you know, deciding to do so or not. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you like, share, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, I'd love to answer them in the comments section down below. I've said this in previous videos, I would love to do a question and answer video with you guys, you know, Q&A, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you have any questions for me about the channel, or just anything in general uh, that isn't you know, too personal or weird, feel free to put it in the comments section again, or go on Twitter, follow me at TechNew, and just tweet at me, DM me, whatever. So yeah, as always, other than that, I will catch you all in the next one.